Hello and welcome to another episode in the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be taking a look at arrays in memory address. Arrays are a collection of items stored at contiguous memory locations. We know how to manipulate and use arrays, but let's go ahead and take a look at how arrays behave in memory. So in Godot, arrays are objects that are stored in memory. The key thing to keep in mind is that arrays are just objects. Now, this is a basic single dimension array. As you can see here, we've declared a variable and we've assigned it an array. I like to call these simple arrays because they're just literal values. Before we begin, I need to go over some shortcuts I'm going to be doing in this slideshow. This is because I just want to focus on the memory address location over the whole picture. But to preface, when you create an empty variable, what you're really doing is you're taking that variable and you're pointing it to an area on memory address. And this is what it would look like. You would have a type, in this case array, and you would have a reference count. And it's one because one item is pointing to it. Now let's say you do variable another array is equal to empty array. Well, you're really pointing to this object. So its reference count goes up to two. That's basically the basics of how it looks like in memory. Now another shortcut I'm going to do in this video is the following. I'm just going to put an integer inside a block to represent how it behaves in memory. But in reality, what we're really doing is when we do have an index, we're actually just pointing to another object in memory that of course keeps count of its reference or reference count. So when we go ahead and add, so when we go ahead and add a value, in this case one, what we're really doing is we're pointing to that same object in memory and we're increasing the reference count by one. And of course, when we go ahead and change that value, we're just pointing to a different object in memory and changing its value, adding a reference count of one and decreasing the reference count of the other. Now this episode, we only really care about the reference count or rather the location and address memory of the array rather than the address memory of the values. So that's all I want to do is just preface, but we're not going to pay any attention to this. All we care about is when I do shorthands, it's really representing this. But even when I do shorthand, our main focus for this episode is just the memory address location of the array and not the memory address locations of the values. This is what a simple array, or rather our my array variable would look like in memory. As you can see here, we have our variable my array, and it's actually pointing to somewhere in our memory address. Keep in mind, this is a basic simplification of how arrays behave in memory. But nonetheless, this is how it would normally behave. Variable points to a location memory address. We have our indexes 0, 1, 2, and we have our values 1, 2, 3. Keep in mind that location memory address starts at the beginning of your array. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we try to assign that variable my array into a different variable. In this case, our new variable copy array will be assigned the values from my array. When we print this out into console using the print statement, it will return one, two, and three. Same thing for copy array, one, two, and three. But when you assign an array to another variable, how does that look like in memory? Well, as you can see here, we have a variable copy array, and it actually references the same array in memory location as the my array. The specific reasons for this can get really deep and it is considered its own topic. However, to keep things simple, just remember when you do direct manipulations such as copy array equals my array, keep in mind we're not using a duplicate function. What you're really doing is you're saying wherever my variable my array is referencing, in this case location 100, assign that reference location to the variable copy array. What this means is that if we were to change a value, let's say the value at index zero, which is one, if we were to change one into 100, what will happen is that copy array and my array will have their indexes changed to 100 because they're both pointing to the same memory address location. So to take a look at that, we have our assignments, like in our previous slide, my array at index zero is equal to 100. Again, notice how we're using my array 
and we're assigning it 100, and notice how when we're printing copy array, a different variable name, it will also change its value to 100, even though my array and copy array both started with the values 1, 2, and 3. Again, this is because copy array and my array both point to the same reference in address memory, and so changing the value of one will actually change the value of the other. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how memory behaves with a 2D array. And all a 2D array is, is an array inside an array, which can also be referred to as a subarray. So our variable 2D array has the value zero, and then a subarray with the values one and two. When we create our variable 2D array and assign it a value, what we do is we reference a location and memory address. And as you can see here, our index at zero has the value zero. But notice how our value at index one is this reference in memory address. That's because this is how arrays behave in memory for GDScript. When we create a subarray, what we're really doing is we're calling a reference to another location in address memory. And then from there, we continue our values. In this case, index zero is one and index one is two. So you can see how this works. If we want to call our subarray, we call 2D array index one, and then index zero for the value one or index one for the value of two. Now, if we take this 2D array and we assign it to a new variable, in this case, we're calling our new variable copy 2D, this is what it looks like. What we're doing is we're taking the reference to location address memory, and we're assigning that location to our copy 2D. So they both point to not only the first section of the array, but also the subarray. So if I were to change a value here, instead of one, we turn this into 100. What happens is when we do a print statement to either copy 2D and even 2D array, it's going to show zero new value and then two because we're referencing the same location address memory for both variables. Now, this is where the duplicate function comes into play. Many times when you create a variable, you do not want to share the values between two different variables. The whole point of variables in most cases is basically isolation. Isolation meaning when you change one variable, you should not be affecting other variables. So the duplicate function comes with two choices. You can do a shallow copy or you can do a deep copy. Now, if you do a shallow copy, keep in mind that shallow copies only makes a copy of the surface of your array. This means that all subarrays will still point to a reference in memory, basically the same reference that your copied array is pointing to. Now, a deep copy will make a copy of everything, including subarrays. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would look like in address memory. Here's an example of shallow copy. We have a variable with a basic array, and then we use the array's built-in method called duplicate, and we pass in the value of false. By passing the Boolean value false, we are telling this method to make a shallow copy of our basic array, and then pass that into copy array. When you use a shallow copy, what you're saying to the system, the compiler, is that you want to take just a shallow copy of the array and put it into a different location in memory address. My array has an array at location memory address 100. By doing a shallow copy, you say variable copy array, take the values from this location and then put that in a different memory address location we can point to instead. So as you can see here, we have our location at 200. Now, if we change the values of my array, we will not affect copy array. And if we change a value in copy array, we will not affect my array. Let's go ahead and take a look at what a shallow copy looks like when you're dealing with subarrays. So as you notice here, we have a subarray, one, two, subarray with three, four. And we're also passing the false value, letting the compiler know that we want to do a shallow copy copy of my array and pass that into copy array. So we have my array, one, two, three, four, and it creates its object in location memory address 100. The values in index zero and one are one and two. And just as we would expect, our value in index two is just a reference to another address memory location where we continue the subarray index zero, three, and index one, four. So when we duplicate, or rather when we, when we do a shallow copy, notice we're using the false value in our duplicate function. When we do a shallow copy and we pass it into a new variable, this is what it looks like. So when we do a shallow copy, notice how we copy everything in the first layer. We, we take everything and we basically duplicate it. We create another location in 300 and notice how we have one and two separated from location 100. When we change indexes zero and one in my array, we do not affect copy array 
array's values and vice versa. However, we also copied my array's reference to memory address location for its subarray. So as you can see here, our subarrays are both pointing to location 200. If you were to change a value in this subarray, it will affect how my array works and it affects how copy array works. So just keep that in mind. You are copying everything, including the reference to location and address memory. Now let's go ahead and do a deep copy. So we have the same values in my array, but this time instead of passing the false Boolean, we're passing the true value into our duplicate method. And by doing this, we're telling the compiler to do a basically deep copy take all the values, take all the subarrays, and give them their own separate memory address location. So again, when we create my array, we're creating it in a memory address location, and we're creating a subarray in a different memory address location. Let's go ahead and take a look at a deep copy and how it looks like in memory address. So when we use the duplicate method and pass in a true Boolean, what we're telling the compiler is, we want to do a deep copy to my array, and then we want to pass that value into copy array. So what that does is we look at the memory address for my array and we say, okay, let's copy this and put it into memory address 300. But when you do the copy, you also look at its references and then you go to the references and you say, hey, let's go ahead and take this subarray and we'll add it to a new address in memory location where we will then pass a new reference to our copy array, basically the array we want to do a deep copy for. We pass the reference value or the new reference to memory address location to the new array. So that's how we get the value 400. There's a lot going on, but just know that at the end of the day, this is what it looks like in memory address. So now, when we change the subarray of copy array, we will not affect my array's subarray because the subarray in my array is pointing or rather referencing an address location that is not the address location our copy array is pointing to. So in this case, we're pointing to 200, copy array is pointing to 400. When we do this copy, we get the same exact values. If we were to compare them for equality, they would be equal. But if we were to compare them to their memory address location, they'll come back false because everything in the deep copy is pointing to a different address and memory location versus our original array. Well, I hope you learned a lot today. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel and thank you for clicking the like button. There is no GitHub project for this episode, so I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.